I'm sure it will sound strange to a lot of you younger guys listening to this video. But for me, Harley Race is the Richard Nixon of wrestling. Harley Race is the first world champion that I remember. Just like Richard Nixon is the first president that I remember. I vaguely knew about LBJ, but I really didn't know him. I didn't really understand who he was. I remember the election and I don't remember him being president. I remember Mr. Nixon very well. And he made a very powerful impression on me as the president. And really, Harley Race was a similar kind of in character to Mr. Nixon. He was gruff. He had a, he had a rough voice. His voice was like, Yes, this is Harley Race, the greatest wrestler on the planet. <clears throat> and he was. He was a heel almost the entire time that he wrestled. I remember him very well. He was coming up in uh, Georgia. He was coming to visit Georgia. And Tommy Rich was going against him. And I remember him putting a bounty on Tommy Rich and um, Austin Idol put Tommy in the Las Vegas leg lock, which was a version of the figure four leg lock, and supposedly tried to break his leg and put him out for a while where they couldn't wrestle. And I remember seeing Harley race. And I found it very, very disturbing. And I I really didn't like the guy. And he wrestled. And I, I really didn't understand what was going on. But you didn't see him very much. And when you saw him, there was a lot of fanfare. He was bigger than life. He was a great champion. And I don't think that we would have had a Ric Flair... Or a Stone Cold Steve Austin, or or a or a Hulk Hogan without him. Even though Hulk Hogan was a was a whole different style, Hulk Hogan was really the first great baby face that I remember as a wrestler. But that's that's a whole another video. Um, but race was was a. Um, was a heel most of his career, and he's still working to this day. Um, I really enjoy his interviews. I really enjoy his work. Mr. Race really, really understood the psychology of wrestling. He understood how to make a match work, how to how to uh, stage a match, how to set up his moves, how to take his time, how to work a crowd. How to present himself, how to talk. And the guy was just an extremely hard worker. I don't know if he's the hardest worker as Flair, but he was up there. I mean, he tells his story of how he flew out to Japan and he was in Japan on a, on a Wednesday night. And then he drove and wrestled an hour in St. Louis. And then the next night, which was the same day. I think that's his story. He re he went right from Supreme to St. Louis, and then he got on a plane and was in uh, Tijuana, and he wrestled Car Carlos Colon, the murderer of uh, Bruiser Brody, and he went through all that. And he was just all over the country. He worked very hard. Um, as I said. He was the first multiple time champion. I think he brought, he beat both the Funk brothers. He brought, he beat Terry. He beat Dory. Um, he had he had a great feud with Dusty Rhodes. He had some great matches with um, Ric Flair. I I loved his moves. I loved his I loved my favorite move of his was when he would take you and he would pick you up and hold you straight up and down and drop you. He was a tremendous champion, um, a tremendous credit, and they say that he really was a lot of the things he said that he was. Um, 
Every time he got in a car, he couldn't. He would go over a hundred. He would drive every car as fast as he could. Um, Van, Big Van Vader said his fingers were huge, and even though he was a lot bigger man than than uh, Harley Race, you know, a lot and a lot younger man that they would they would wrestle with fingers, and he and he said, well, he thought he thought that Harley was was bullshitting him, you know, that they want to have a finger wrestle. And he thought he was going to take it easy on him. But when he got up to it, yeah, he, he saw a different. He said uh, Race's fingers were big. I don't know if he ever had a finger finger match with um, Andre the Giant, but I, I don't know. Maybe he could have given him a match. But anyway, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is that Harley Race was a legendary figure. He was great for wrestling. He was a heel most of the time, but really at heart, he was a decent guy, and he, he really understood the business and what it was all about. He had a short career in uh, WWE, and I think that uh, Vince had him die blind. Vince kind of character caricatured him and made him into a kind of a fool, and I didn't really appreciate it at the time, and I still don't appreciate it this to this day. I don't appreciate a lot of the things that Vince did. But Mr. Race wouldn't say that. So for whatever that's worth, uh, that's what it is. I do agree with something that Mr. Race said. Mr. Race was in a shoot interview, I think in circa 2000, about 14, 15 years ago. And they said something to the nature of, that's how the business has evolved. And he said it did evolve. It was led that way. And I agree with him. I don't think the business evolved. I think somebody purposely made the business the way it is. I think the death of the the death of the territories was done on purpose, and uh, I think it's a big shame and it's a tragedy. But that's another video for another day. All right, Mr. Race, you're the greatest, the greatest wrestler, greatest worker ever. I don't know if you're better, bigger than Ric Flair. I'm not qualified to say, or better than Hogan, or better than that. I'm not saying that. But you can make a case for you anytime. All right, buddy. Take care.